Hi and welcome to Synth Explained. By the end of these sessions you should be able to take a standard synthesizer be that subtractive or FM, wavetable, granular or sample based and be able to construct your own sounds. That's the whole purpose of these videos and that's my aim that by the end of this you will know how to do those things. What we're going to do first is look at subtractive synthesis because in most cases that's what people often refer to when they talk about synths whether that's an analog synth or a virtual instrument synth and we're going to take that in detail through the steps that make up a synth sound. Now a synth starts with the trigger such as a keyboard we've got one here and I've got my MIDI keyboard connected as well and then it has a sound source that's triggered and in this case it's oscillators and then it goes through a filter here and then through an amp envelope which we often refer to as ADSR which stands for attack, decay, sustain and release and then out to the output stage and that's the kind of flow. Now I'm using Strobe from F Expansion part of the Decam uh, synth pack for this reason, you can download it for 30 days, so you could download it and use it as I go through these videos and go through it with me. Then all the principles I'm going to show you will work and translate to any synth that you use that uses subtractive synthesis. They'll probably use different names sometimes, but on the whole, what we're going to use are the basic principles of synthesis, which are a sound source, filters, envelopes, and modulators, which really start to make things exciting. So I'd recommend that you head over to fexpansion.com and download Decam, the synth package for 30 days, and then you can work with me. Otherwise, use your own synth. Obviously, this would translate to anything from massive, hybrid, 101 synths out there, or even real hardware synths. This will work the same. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at waveforms. And waveforms in subtractive synthesis are the starting point. What we mean by subtractive synthesis is the sound is derived by taking a sound source and then subtracting things from it. So we're subtracting using filters, we're subtracting using an envelope. And that's what we mean by subtractive synthesis. And so we start off with the sound source. And what's also helpful about using this synth in particular, this VI, is that as I show you the different things that go on, you'll actually see a graphical representation on the screen here, the visualizer. So well, let's look at sound sources first. The first one we're gonna look at is a saw wave, which is this. And as you can see, it's a pretty dull sound on its own. There's nothing to it. And that's why synths are so powerful when you can start adding filters, modulators, and envelopes, and all that kind of stuff. So that's a saw sound, and that's what it looks like. Now that's used for a variety of things from pads, bases, all sorts of stuff. Really, there's no rules, but we can sort of lead you in the right direction as we go through this to tell you where to start in terms of your sound source starting point. So there's a saw wave, and we'll be using that to make sounds later. Then a square wave. Sounds a bit like a computer game noise, and it's used in sound making. Now we're going to our sub oscillators now. We then also have a sine wave. Now sine waves aren't used as much as other waveforms for this simple reason. The harmonic content really doesn't change whatever you do to it. If you put a filter on it, it still stays the same. It just gets quieter. That's all it does. And so sine waves are, are useful for perhaps sub bass and then triangles and we can use those for reedy and fluty instruments and all that kind of stuff as well which is quite cool so there we are that's waveforms the source in analog synthesis to any kind of sound that you want